Good afternoon, everybody. Yeah, uh, thank you, Aminder, for giving me this opportunity. I'll be talking about the patterns to evaluate age-related macular degeneration with OCT angiography. Macular degeneration is one retinal disorder which utilizes the potential of OCT angiography the best, which, which translates into the clinical practice and, uh, in, uh, in, and management of uh, macular degeneration. Uh, it is just a small repetition of what uh, Alvinder and uh, Dr. Ritesh has told, but on the left, just a repeat a uh, little bit. Uh, on the left hand side, the, there are cross sections of retinal layers. These and fast maps of vascular patterns at different levels of retina are developed in OCT angiography. And uh, in addition to the slab base and fast angiogram, OCT data can also be viewed on the cross section. The yellow dots here, this is, uh, is the Heidelberg machine where the, uh, the flow is depicted in yellow dots. And these are the areas where the flow is present. Uh, in macular degeneration, we mostly focus on this area. Uh, these are the superficial vascular network. This is deep, uh, deep vascular uh, layer. This is uh, avascular complex, chorea capillaris, and choroidal vessels. Most of the uh, macular degeneration management needs can be, uh, can, be, can be utilized with assessing this area except the RAP or type 1 lesions. For vascular diseases like diabetic retinopathy, vascular occlusions, we look in this area that is superficial vascular and deep vascular mm, complex. Now, uh, OCT angiography has high sensitivity and specificity in detecting the choroidal neovascular membranes, and studies have demonstrated the ability of OCT angiography to clearly visualize all three types of uh, macular degeneration, macular neovascularization. This is a type 1 macular neovascularization where, can you, where you can see that the, there is a yellow flow here, uh, which, is, which is below the RP, and on the slabs you can see this network is present, uh, which is present below the RPE. Uh, this is a type 2 macular neovascularization where you see the, uh, uh, the vascularization, neovascularization above the RP and which can be better located when you assess the cross-section flow simultaneous with the NFAS images. The macular neovascularization can be combined or mixed also. Polypoidal choroidopathy or PCV can also be detected on, angio on this um, OCT angiography. You can detect the flow in the, uh, this thumb-like uh, polyp lesion and also the branching network uh, here in the double layer sign. Uh, generally, it is difficult to pick these, this flow in polyps because the flow is not, uh, not much in these lesions, but if you carefully see these uh, this cross-sectional uh, OCT along with the NFOS images, you can detect this flow in many of these patients. Although the gold standard in these patients is still ICG angiography. Now this is one patient where there is a, there is a flow present in this lesion, but there is no fluid. Uh, subsequently, this patient developed uh, uh, the, the, the fluid here. These are actually the non exudative CNVM patients, which out of them, almost about 20 to 80 percent eventually they convert in exudative CNV. And these lesions, these non exudative choroidal neovascular membrane lesions, need close follow up, but we don't do any treatment until they develop fluid. They are best found on OCT angiography, and they are very easily missed on fluorescent angiography and also on OCT. This is another sim similar situation where the CNVM is present, but there is no fluid. This is a crescent choroidal neovascularization. They are also best found on OCT angiography. The difference in vascularized lesion and the crescent lesion is they one grows vertically and the other grows horizontally. But both may develop exudation at a later date. The fellow eye of the patients who have exudative macular degeneration should also be very carefully looked for. Uh, about 6 to 20 percent of exudative AMD patients have non-exudative choroidal neovascular membrane in the other eye, which may develop exudation at a later date. There are uh, characteristic patterns of macular neovascularization in, met, uh, in wet AMD. They, there can be uh, tangled or ill-defined uh, neovascularization, which are generally immature. Medusa and C-fan lesions are, uh, are generally mature. Hypermature are the long linear and the dead-free type of lesion. 
these immature lesions have high risk of growth and mostly these lesions are treatment naive. Mature and hypermature lesions have moderate chances of progression and some of them may have resistance to anti-VEGF injections also. So based on the appearance of uh, these uh, macular neovascularization, the characteristic patterns of these lesions, you can assess how this lesion is going to behave and what is the age of this lesion and whether it is treatment naive or active. Now, apart from the branching networks, there is a, there is a characteristic dark halo, which is also the activity biomarker in uh, these, these, these macular neovascular, uh, this macular degeneration patients. You can differentiate between the active and non-active macular neovascularization. Most generally, the densely packed nets or C fans or extensive branching, extensive capillary sprouting, numerous anastomosis, they are generally the active and immature lesions. They probably need treatment. The larger, larger diameter filamentous vessels with lesser branching, lower capillary sprouting, and anastomosis, they are generally mature lesions, and sometimes they're not so responsive to treatment. Uh, treatment response can be monitored seeing the appearance of uh, the, the, the neovascularization. These are the serial pictures of OCT angiography of a patient. You can see the response of the, the uh, after giving the injection, that there is a regression in, in, in the neovascular network, but it again re, regrows. The maximum regression occurs after two weeks of the treatment. The reproliferation with reopening of the previously closed coronal neovascular membrane was noted after four weeks, by four weeks. This is an interesting patient, who, uh, lady, who had six by nine partial vision in the left eye. There was some abnormality in the RPE. Uh, on OCT angiography, there was no flow. On subsequent examination, this patient complained of blurring of vision, and there was this hyporeflective space developing, and that was progressive. Uh, since the vision was deteriorating and there was an increase in this hyperreflective space, it was interpreted as a fluid, and this patient was treated with, with injections. But it did not improve, and the lesion, the, the hyperreflective space kept on increasing, and the vision also deteriorated. OCT angiography revealed that there was no flow. This was actually a patient of adult onset vitelliform dystrophy, which was interpreted as macular uh, neovascularization. So OCT, OCTA is a reliable tool for confirming the absence of neovascular disease also. Sometimes in chronic CSR also you see similar kind of pictures. OCT angiography has a role in, dry in, in assessing the progression of dry macular degeneration also. The coronal vasculature can be visualized with geographic atrophy areas, within the geographic atrophic areas, and OCT angiography has a role in it. Excellent correlation between the fundus autofluorescence and fast OCT and OCT angiography for the determination of geographic atrophy extension area can be uh, seen. There are limitations with this technology, but still it has high diagnostic value in detecting the presence or absence of macular neovascularization, and it is a useful and dependable tool in management of neovascular macular degeneration. In future, uh, in very near future, we'll have artificial intelligence which will be helping us uh, in detecting AMD and differentiating it from other maculopathy. It will help in improving the resolution and removal of the artifacts and measuring vessel density, fractional dimension will help in assessing whether the neovascular neovascularization is active or not.